What's cracking, y'all? You are now watching Boo TV. Appreciate you for stopping in. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, stay notified, and let's get into the topic for today. What's cracking, y'all? Here with the final episode of the NB90 series, Volume 5, the years 1998 and 1999. The end of the Chicago Bulls dynasty in 98 and the beginning of a new era of NBA stars in which Michael Jordan had passed the torch to. The Tim Duncans, the Kobe Bryants, the Shaquille O'Neal's. Uh, all these players would take the NBA into the 2000s. Allen Iverson. Tracy McGrady, Vince Carter, etc., etc., etc. So, with no further ado, let's get into it. Oh, snap! NBA TV presents MB 90s. It's the NBA. Like he bought airspace, it went with the flow of Jordan. Back in the day. Don't ever underestimate the heart of a champion. In the decade when the shorts got longer, the players soared higher. Elevates and throws it down. And the game went global. We've got all the players. The things he was doing, like, man, we've never seen this before. And the looks. A Detroit player. <laughs> the 90s were bad for clothes, we know this. And rivalries that were off the hook. 37 points in like 15 seconds. So chill on out. We're keeping it really real. My general idea was to dunk on everybody. Right here on MB 90s. In June of 1997, the obvious first pick in the NBA draft wasn't coming from an obvious place. He's a swimmer from the Virgin Islands. Are you kidding me? And upon receiving the call, the college standout broke into a little stand-up. So, Pop, all I've heard about from, from since I've gotten here was that you're going to trade me. That's all I've heard for the last 20 minutes. Timmy. And who would have ever thought you'd call this guy Timmy? Duncan, and that is his first NBA basket. Tim Duncan, so quiet, so reserved, can't get him to say boo. Look at that spin move, baseline, wow. Oh my goodness. The happiest person in the entire NBA when Tim Duncan got drafted by the Spurs was David Robinson. And Tim Duncan ain't nothing but a new David Robinson. We called him the quiet guys that win. Yeah, Duncan <laughs> Robinson. The ultimate professionals, just the dignity and the poise that those guys always displayed, to me, defined those Spurs teams. In the Duncan sweepstakes, the Celtics had the odds on their side with their lucky leprechaun, too. But this time, the little leprechaun came up short. Imagine that. Duncan would have been great in Boston. It, it was tough on the city. Definitely was. In D.C., the fans didn't have much to jump up and down about. So a franchise in need of a change started with their name. Me personally, I'm looking forward to something new. You know, the Bullets haven't won in a long time, and we're looking forward to creating our own history. I think any name works when you win it. <laughs> you could be called the losers and win the championship, and everybody feel good about you. True. New York City is the home of fashion. Hip hop, bagels, and point guards. Matter of fact, point guides. I hear you, Fife. And one of those point guards turned out to be a wonderful wizard. Oh my God. Rod, Rod Strickland, Strickland. One of the best point guards. Rod is a pure point guard. He can shoot the ball from the outside, has good range, but also looks to penetrate and dish the ball off. I remember hearing about him before I even saw him when he, when he was still in high school. Strictly Strick. I'm the coin changer. Rod's throwing nothing but dimes. The dribble, get all the way in the painted area. Pause, sometimes in the air or on the ground. Whack, hit the open person. I think he's the best in the league at getting to the basket. Every team he went to, he made that team better. Still to come on MB 90s. Half man, half amazing. Down court, Vince Carter. He flies in. 
Are you kidding me? He's probably one of the greatest in-game dunkers of all time. If you go to regular game, he had some dunks that probably could have won the dunk contest. We got McGrady again this time. The long to Vince Carter! Throw it down, big man, one time. Nasty. Boy, that's my boy. Everything I taught him. How about this guy, Vince Carter? Vince Carter was sick. Hey, y'all like the show? Let us know. Hit us up on Twitter with the hashtag NB90s. Come on, y'all. You are watching NB90s Volume 5 with me, Fab Five Freddy. What up, y'all? This is Mike Bev. And the one thing I remember about the 90s was the incredible nicknames. Check them out. Mailman. Mailman delivered. Back to Carl, base left, 12-footer, good! The mailman delivered! And he was a big mailman, too. He had a double bag. Corliss Williamson, hold on, hold on, hold on. What was his name again? The Big what? Here's Big Nasty, look out below! Oh, oh. The Big Nasty, that's what it was. It was fitting, Big Nasty. He was definitely nasty. I don't remember him. Augman. Stacy Augman, Stacey Plastic Augman. Man. He almost was like a GQ NBA model ball player, man. I like this, Stacey. Robert, track the trailer, may he rest in peace. Tractor trailer, rest in peace. Oh, baby, Big up chop, light on the toes. Track the trailer, I loved it. Great nickname. Antoine Walker, I don't remember his nickname. I don't remember Twan's. That's, that's pretty hot. I just call Antoine the shake, man. He was like the yeah. Harlem up top shaker. Just as the decade had begun, it would close with Portland blazing a trail as a Western Conference power. And they couldn't have done it without their international man of mystery. Arvidas. A legend that we had heard so much about. He was straight up Drago. He was straight up on that, like, I must break you now. But then he'd make these crazy passes. You know, he would throw around the back passes and between the leg passes. Wow! Arvidas orchestrated the whole deal. We saw him at the end of I just wish he would have had that opportunity uh, earlier in, in his career. In the city of roses, the blazes were in full bloom. While in the city of big shoulders, the bulls had come to lean on their dynamic duo. Batman and Robin. Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, Q-tip fight dog. It made it hard for any team. I don't care what kind of role you were on. You had to slow your roll down. It was just unreal for them to have everything, athleticism, skills, and also they played together. Jordan off the screen by Pippen, right back to Scotty. Oh, oh, oh. Any of these long players that are out now who play defense and can push the ball up the court and everything like that, they all come from that Scotty Pippen mode. Scotty had that body sculpted by Michelangelo. There's nobody in our game right now that takes a game that's serious defensively and who were born with just some spider arms. Fires for Pippen. Oh, Scotty Pippen in the face of Patrick Ewing. His contributions, I think, sometimes get lost in the Bulls and their success. It was a familiar tune at the 98 Finals when the Bulls and Jazz got together for an encore. And game six came to a thunderous crescendo. Stockton, a three-pointer! The Jazz got the game. They're up one, 20 seconds left. Great free throw shooting team. I was actually excited to see the Bulls have to play a game seven. And then Jordan steals the ball. Uh-oh. And then Jordan comes down, takes his time. The Bulls can win it right here! Everybody in the building knew what was going to happen. Here's a story that Michael told me about. He goes, man, you know, when I quit playing, I was in a gym working out in Chicago. Brian Russell walks through. He goes, oh, man, I hate you quit, man, because I was going to bust your fire. Yeah! You got to be careful what you say to who. Of course that shot goes in. That's what he does. Look at all the faces in this photo. This is a sad, sad sight right here. It was just the wrong time. Do I keep saying that as we talk about the 90s? Did you say their timing was wrong? It was the Bulls' decade. Their sixth NBA championship. Six of them. Now, y'all say whatever you want. They can't win until we quit. As the decade was coming to a close, the Bulls' run was coming to an end. But it sure was a memorable last dance. 
How do you break up a team that's winning? They left with the crown and that was it. Then he went and had some parties. Mike leaves. Scotty, he gone. How does that happen? The culmination of just an incredible experience for all of us who played with the Bulls during those years. Coming up next, white chocolate, dope knit thing. White chocolate brought, yo, he was like, yo, what's up? Bends into the lane, double, feeds it out to Jason Williams. Jason back to Williams, and wide open. A great pass from Jason Williams. You're watching MB 90s, volume five. You are watching MB 90s Volume 5. It's time for Rewind. We had this segment called Rewind, which was the hottest segment going. Oh, yeah. Rewind. I remember Rewind. That was like my favorite part. And check out this edition in this edition. In this edition of Rewind. Rewind had a little narration to it. You know, the mob was like, oh, Monday, this is what we had. What day of the week is it today? Monday. On oh, this Monday. Today, boys and girls, today is Monday. Oh, this Ahmad Rashad having a bunch of fun. Thunder Mountain. Wednesday. Wednesday. Thursday. And Rewind, yeah, you just saw all the plays and then the bloopers and stuff like that. We watched Rewind and it was like, it was like gold. But it was before all the social media. During that time, the only place you can get that is inside stuff. And thanks for watching Repetition. That's Rewind. <laughs> Fortunately, styles like the Jerry Curl fade away. But A.C. Green, who wore it well, uh, managed to endure like none other in NBA history. Yeah, he did. 1,192 games. Like, who plays that many games grabbing rebounds, banging, you're sweating, but I don't know if you're sweating. Jerry Curl juice on me. I don't know what's <laughs> going on here. Eventually cut the Jerry Curl at a nice little page, and I don't think that record will ever be broken. AC Green is so stable, so dependable. AC Green was the true Iron Man. He was the man of steel. But Superman's not the only one who can fly. The NBA was taken to new heights by Air Canada. Watch the penetration, he's going to the basket, score! Vince Carter. Throw it down, big man, one time. Oh, no! He brought the ruckus. He went to North Carolina. Like, a lot of those players are under wraps. It's like, as soon as he got into the NBA, it was like, I'm free. Oh, oh my goodness. Then sanity. I mean, this guy's crazy. Carter. Oh. Elevates and throws it down. I love Matumbo. If ever there was a time where he should have did that to himself, that would have been it. He should have waved the finger to himself because that was just, that's like a retirement, Doug. That's the stuff that we, we say, Matumbo's jogging down court, being like, man, am I playing too long? All right, gonna run the play for it. Carter! <laughs> he had wings. The dunks of the week, he was in every single one of them. He had everything a high flyer could ask for. Literally, like, he had strings. Boom! Jump the opposite direction, turn around. What in the world? What is this? <laughs> this isn't what you do. You could get hurt. I would have loved to have played against Vince Carter, and he would have dunked on me big time. Can you believe this guy? In Sacramento, there was another rookie captivating crowds with a different flavor. Williams to the hall. C. Webb to White Chocolate. White Chocolate, perfect name. White chocolate, let every white person know we know where it came from and let every black person know he's one of us. That was all good, perfect. When I think about one of the more exciting players in the league was Jason Williams. He could have been a Harlem Globetrotter. I'm not kidding you. It was showtime all over again. Williams, can you believe him? Nasty with that ball handle. He probably drove most coaches crazy, but he couldn't help himself. It's just the way he played, and it actually worked for him. Uh, Jay, Jay, Jason, he's like uh, the newborn kid on the family. Yeah, and that youngster, he helped bring the King's crowd back to life. Oh, what a move by Jason Williams! Behind the back! Hey, love it here! 
You're one of the best fan base teams in the entire NBA. The Lakers would play uh, in, up there, and like Phil Jackson would have earplugs in his ears. Like dudes would have cowbells. Those are good fans up there. They had a great team there, great group of guys there, and they played exciting basketball. They had Jason Weber and Vladi. They had Peja, they had Doug Christie, Doug they had Christie. The, the Nose Brothers. Doug Christie, he had got a beak. I could say that because I got one. And then, you know, John Barry had that pointy nose. Well, there's nothing like watching a team play that all five guys touch the ball and they've got some sort of a thing going. That's what the 90s were about. They had so many of these teams like this that they were really exciting. They had a great team. I love that team. They put Sacramento on the map. Watching MB 90s, Volume 5, with me, Fab Five Freddy. Welcome to MB 90s, Volume 5. In Vancouver, Sharif Abdul Rahim and Mike Bibby had given the Grizzlies a little northern exposure. Bibby with a no But the biggest thing to hit town was the man they called Big Country. It sounds like they may be having a little party over there. It sounds like they're getting after it. Big Country. Thank Here you. it is, twice as tall as I. Yeah. <laughs> the Reeves, was that? Big Country. R E E V E S? Uh -huh. Hello, how are you? Big country. Yeah, no problem. Yes, sir. <laughs> Sometimes I just don't get it. You know, maybe I needed to be out on the farm a little bit more. We didn't have a lot of big country in North Jersey. Nice talking to you. Stop by sometime. We'll see you later. Thanks. Big country Brian. He wasn't that athletic, but he was a hard guy to stop. Big country takes it in, and a nice oh, reversal. He had a crazy one-hand jumper. Once they puts up the shot, it's good! Hitting people in the pose. Reeves. Dude, I forgot about Big Country. Wow. Dude, that that name hasn't crossed my mind since he played. Wow, man, that took me back, bro. I forgot. Big body. Getting all the country fed. Country strong. Gives the country, goes to the rock and jams it in the face of Carl Malone. But he was born country strong. So you having a little fish right here. That's okay, I got some right here and I'm doing just fine. But he had the whole Vancouver on his back. Dude, I think I went fishing with him. We went and took a fish out of the water. This, you haven't seen one this big? I haven't seen one that big, but I've never mm -hmm. seen anyone catch one that's already gutted and it's still frozen. We bounced from big country to the big city, where Patrick Ewing had been the leading man in the Big Apple for over a decade. That man was a beast. Who else could shoot the jumper? Who else could post you up and take you inside, left or right? I mean, Patrick Ewing was very athletic and a good defender. Patrick Ewing, little block, and the defensive play of the game. He was the face of that franchise for so many years. The rivalry between the Pacers and the Knicks is legendary. We could talk about the Knicks all day long. Yeah, Patrick Ewan was the truth. If it wasn't for Patrick Ewan, man, I don't know if I would have been as big of a basketball fan as I was. Yes, I do remember Pat Ewan with the big knee pads. Nobody <laughs> does that anymore. I mean, the knee pads were nasty, but he was the man. I loved everything about Pat, and I was just I always hated that he could never get one. And in 99, the Knicks were on their way. Houston ducks under. Got it! second number eight team to knock off a number one. And when Pat went down with an injury, the scrappy Knicks rallied to try to get one for the big fella. What a great run. That was a special team. Marcus Camby just had the greatest run of his life in those playoffs. This was the year where Larry Johnson's back was so bad that he really had to develop the three-point. He was hitting that shot, which he started doing this. And in that moment, it's your dream. Down three, I'm going to get a four-point play. Johnson is three-point territory, but guarded tightly. Johnson cuts left, now fires a three. It is good, and he's fouled. It counts, and he is fouled. I remember Larry Bird was on the sidelines pissed. Larry was pissed. So many things about that play are special. One, the foul wasn't really a foul. I mean, it was barely like a... I think he maybe got like some of the hair on his arm. He's going nuts. He's going nuts and he's like, yo, yo, chill, chill. 
And he went, oh. <laughs> he took his zen moment and took a breath and had to hit that free throw. I remember being so nervous. I'm like, you've got to hit this free throw. you got to hit this free throw. Larry Johnson looking for the lead. The free throw is good. A four-point play. And this incredible playoff run continues. Meanwhile, the Blazers' holiday weekend was ruined when they were barbecued at the buzzer. We call it the Memorial Day Miracle in San Antonio. Into Sean Elliott. He fires the three and hits it! Sean Elliott, Timmy Toes. That Timmy Toes shot, man. Oh, shot. Oh, it looked like he was going to step out of bounds. You know, I don't know what they call it in Portland, but that's what we call it, Memorial Day Miracle. Three, five! Sean Elliott, an off-balance three! Incredible. Sean Elliott was huge in their championship run. Ice cold, consistent, Great shooter, the guy you, you you hated to play against but always won on your team. Good evening, everyone. From the Alamo Dome, the San Antonio Spurs, the New York Knicks in game one. The San Antonio Spurs, they were expected to be here. Robinson, Duncan, Avery Johnson, Sean Elliott, all anchored by Greg Popovich. Okay. Look at young Greg Popovich, bro. Golly. It's what, 24 years ago? Man, time's flying. They had a squad, though. Avery Johnson with that squeaky voice. It's been happening in San Antonio for quite some time because of Popovich is that their system is a beautiful system to watch. Tim Dunn made a living. Gas step, got him. Bank, take that to the bank. There's another bank shot in your face. That's Tim. And the story, Tim Duncan, 33 points, 16 rebounds. I actually thought the Knicks had a chance. A hot Latrell Sprewell. Here's Sprewell. Yeah. Mm. Oh. Mm. A young spry Marcus Canby, Larry mm. Johnson coming up the four-point play, and just the Spurs just made it not fun. They sucked all the fun out of it. No, we're just gonna beat you slowly. Spurs style. The ultimate protectors defensively. Block. Kirk Thomas rejected by David Robinson. Spurs put a stranglehold on the '99 NBA Finals. Yeah, that's the general right there. That's the little general. You know him. David Johnson. They call him the little general for a reason. Tell y'all something. We, hold on. We have all that old laughing and joking before the game today. You know, everything he said meant everything in the world at that moment. You know what I'm saying? I was backing up to let you go. 5-0. 5-0. Shoot the ball. Move the ball. 5-0. Get in the post, 5-0. A title's at stake. Spurs are closing in. With the Admiral on a mission, it was the little general who came up with the biggest shot of his career. Elliott bluffs, drives, kicks. Avery Johnson for the lead, yes. Avery Johnson drills it from the baseline. We'll forever watch that shot. The little guy sticks that dagger right toward your heart on every occasion. And I think that's the biggest thing with Avery Johnson. Never had gaudy numbers, but his team won. The San Antonio Spurs win their first ever NBA championship. For so long, this is what you dream about, you know. you. And now you stay. I can't even talk about it. I mean, it's incredible. I'm blessed. Just blessed. I keep following around the best player in the game. I was fortunate to go from Chicago to San Antonio and join those guys. Man, am I lucky? Oh, what the hell am I doing here? <laughs> I have a feeling that has something to do with all these championships. Yeah, that 99 title would kick the... Four straight championships for Steve Kerr. Spurs to another level at the turn of the century, but that's another story for another time. Hey yo, I'm Fab Five Freddy saying thanks for watching NB90. See you on the rebound. That was a lot of fun. Uh, I really enjoyed going through this uh, these five episodes for the NB90s series and uh, reliving those 90s moments and being reminded of some things and some things I honestly weren't aware of or didn't know was happening around that time during that decade. But man, that big country, man, that 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 mind f me, bro. I forgot about that. Avery Johnson, and he's squeaky, even as a coach. Come on, guys. It's, get your head in the game. It's like, oh, my God. I can't listen to that guy talk. For me, it's like nails on a chalkboard listening to Avery Johnson talk. Steve Kerr, definitely very fortunate guy. 
Tim Duncan, one of the most NBA-ready players to ever come out of the draft into the uh, National Basketball Association. No question about that. Tim Duncan is definitely on that list. Um, generally considered the greatest power forward of all time. Really played almost, played center about just as much as he played power forward, or, power forward or sometimes more. Um, but him and David Robinson were a beast, a beast, a beast. But after that championship... I don't know if they're going to do an NB2000 series, NB20, but after that, Shaq was just terrorizing them. Terrorizing them. From, from 2000, 2001, 2002, thrashing Robinson and Duncan at the same time, but Robinson was definitely on his way out the door, out of his prime at the same time. But I would have loved to see a prime Robinson and a prime Shaq go at it, but Prime Shaq during that, that three-peat, I've never seen such a dominant figure like him on a basketball floor at any given time. Just she, she couldn't do anything with him. <laughs> couldn't do anything with him. But that's a story for another day. Appreciate you all. If you want to check out the other episodes, go check out our NBA 90s playlist. Thank you for supporting. Like, comment, subscribe. Hit the bell. Stay notified. And... I'll catch you on the next one. We out, baby.